Hello everyone, this is Aki Magneto. Straight away we are going to introduce PHP. That means we are going to make our files dynamic. Now, what do we need PHP for? It's to handle the local, uh, is to handle our scripts. And because PHP scripts are volatile, they cannot be, you know, be viewed by your just your ordinary web browser just the way you view your HTML files. So in this, we need our local server. And I'm going to make use of ZAMP. So you can go online, download it and install it. Now, we are going to create a database and uh, we're going to give it a name and if you are wondering on how to create a, a database or your web browser this is the link for you to go through it now we're going to create some tables inside values we're going to copy our initial uh, files on that register something inside this location inside this you know, uh, directory now we're we are going to receive the file from html to php and uh, the next thing we are going to do after this is to add some attributes to the initial register form we have already. Then after we attribute this, we are going to create a connection file. That means the file that will help us to link straight to our database. And after the use, we are going to complete the registration form. So let's get down to work here. Yeah. Now, as, as I've told you earlier on, the first thing we are going to do here is to create a database. Now, we're going to launch your browser. I'm going to launch your browser um, preferably for this tutorial I'm using a uh, Mozilla Firefox so what you're gonna do is just type localhost PHP Miami and um, oh sorry sorry before this you have to launch your control panel for ZAMP now if you have successfully installed your ZAMP now you must have this control panel if you can find it check through this directory or program Scroll, scroll, uh, scroll straight to your ZAMP and you will see they launch it. Then you start the Apache and you start, you start the MySQL. So that is the reason why it's, this is not showing. So now once you see, once you can see a uh, a a green um sign here, that means you are good to go. And if you can see the the yellow one here, you are good to go as well. So let's go straight. Let's refresh this. Now you can see it's connected. Good. So we can see this on our uh, system. Now the next thing for us to do is to click click on this place and uh, choose your desired uh, database name. You can choose, let's say, um, let's say Len. Good. Let's say Len. Okay. Collection. Just click on create. Now you've created the. The database now the next thing for you is to locate your database along this section here click on link now we are going to need uh like five of uh, let me see uh five columns but you are you you need to give the table a name let's give it the name of users and we need five columns now what you need to do is just click on go now the next phase of this thing is just i want you to follow me just the way i'm, I'm doing it now you enter user id now you make this integer the length can be thin now you make this auto increment you auto in increment this now the next one is going to be name now this cannot be integer this will be like a uh, text or voucher so i'll give 100 that means the length of the name if you let's assume you are bearing Arnold Schwarzenegger so you can compare it to John Doe so if you give 10 and your user has like 20 letters in his name so it's going to be congested and the database will not respond to you so the next thing you're going to do here is a user underscore name now you can make this voucher that means you you might enter a mixture of uh, letters and alphabet so you can make this um, let's say 50. now uh, after this you uh user email and uh, you make these uh, voucher as well because you're going to make use of uh, you know um at sign and stuff like that so you can pull these as um, 100 anyhow you can make these 500 anyhow you like it just make sure you do the right thing now the last one we are going to capture here is a uh, password now and that this will also be voucher good now once you're through with this, don't add any other thing. Just click on save and uh, it's going to launch. Good. Now, so once you click on this structure, now you can see what your table is made up of. Now, the next thing we are going to do right here is for us to, let's check our to-do list. Now, first one we have 
located our server, we have created our database, our table is started values. Now let's copy our file. Now if you are with me on the pre previous uh, lessons, you will see this tutorial folder. Just copy, copy, and uh, go straight to your computer, local disk, XAMPP, and uh, htdocs. Now htdocs, look for a place to paste it here first go tutorial now if you like you can change it let's say learn good now so now you can access these through you can check you can check to know if what you are doing is okay now for us to to uh ping or to check if our file is already inside the root folder of the local server you just need to press localhost slash lane if it doesn't display that means good it displays so that means we are on the good way that means we are on the straight path so now what we need to do next is for us to create we is what is for us to transform the register.html i mean this transform it to php because it this won't work like this as in this won't work this will return value this will save values so what we need to do right now is to uh, save sorry let's now remember Try not to fetch the file from your desktop, but fetch the file from your HD docs. Now, once you do this, open this. Good. Now, copy everything. Copy. Now, what you need to do is copy, open a new tab, and paste, and save under the same directory as register dot php as simple as that once you do that you can close this and if possible you can delete the one we have there already good you can delete can delete now you can check if your file will still be active or not now you just need to change the, the extension here to php that's all boom you can see it works now the next thing we are going to do it so uh, let's check our to-do list sorry for us to be on the right track now we have done that so now let's add some attributes to our form so in the next video i'm going to show you how to have some attributes to the form thank you